Next chapter, reception, response and coordination in plants. Now, all organisms respond to external stimuli. When a strong and bright light falls on our eyes, we close them. When a thorn pricks our finger, we immediately retract our hand. When we accidentally touch a hot object, we immediately withdraw our hand. A variation in conditions that bring about a change in the activity of the organism is called a stimulus. In this case, pricking of the thorn is the stimulus. The change in activity by the organism is called a response. In this case, retracting the hand is the response. The parts of the body that receive the stimulus are called receptors. In our case, pain receptors on the skin are the receptors. The parts of the body that brings about the response are called effectors. In this case, the skeletal muscles of the arm are the effectors. It is important to have internal coordination and control so that the reception and response bear some relationship necessary for a correct reaction. For instance, when the finger is pricked, nerve cells carry signals to the central nervous system, which initiates the appropriate response. Plants too respond to external stimuli like touch as well as light. Reception and response to stimuli enables organisms to survive in their environment, acquire nutrients, reproduce, and escape from harm. Reception, response, and coordination in plants. Unlike animals, plants do not move from one place to another. However, they show growth movements in response to some stimuli like sunlight, water, soil, and so on. There are two major types of movements in plants, tropic and nastic movements. Plants' roots grow downwards while shoots grow upwards. These growth movements in plants are based on the direction of external agents or stimuli. Common external stimuli include light, gravity, contact or water source. Directional movements or growth towards or away from a stimulus are called tropic movements. Tropic movements towards a stimulus is termed as positive while tropic movement away from a stimulus is termed as negative. Take for example this potted plant kept indoors. The stem has turned towards the window, that is towards the direction of light. Movement in plants due to light is termed as phototropism. In this respect, the plant stem is growing towards light while the root is growing away from the light. Therefore, the shoots exhibit positive phototropism, which allows them to trap maximum sunlight for photosynthesis, while the roots exhibit negative phototropism. The potted plant is then placed horizontally for a few days. It is found that the roots have grown downwards towards the gravitational pull. The shoots on their path have grown upwards against the gravitational pull. Plants' growth movement in response to the force of gravity is called geotropism. The roots exhibit positive geotropism which allows them to obtain water and nutrients from the soil 
while the shoots exhibit negative geotropism. This succulent stem is called a tendril. Tendrils grow in the direction of a solid object that they come in contact with. Plant's growth movement in the direction of a solid object that touches it is called thigmotropism. Growth movement of plants in response to the stimulus of water or moisture is called hydrotropism. In this setup, we can see that the bean seed has its roots growing towards water. Water is the stimulus that has led to this directional growth movement of the root. Nastic movements in plants are also a response to stimuli, such as contact, light, or heat. Response due to light is called photonasty, while response to touch is called haptonasty. Unlike tropic movements, nastic movements do not lead to growth and are non-directional. Nastic movements are also reversible unlike tropic movements. Pitcher plant and the Venus flytrap close and catch insects as soon as they land on them. The leaves of mimosa plant close when they are touched. Here, the movements do not depend on the direction of the stimulus. The leaves of oxalis move in response to the intensity of light. They open up in daylight and fold them when light intensity is less. Flowers such as sunflower, morning glory, and tulips bloom during the day and close in the evening. And now we look at coordination in plants. We know that plants' growth requires enough water, minerals, and energy. But then, why do plants bend towards light and not grow straight? And why is it that stems grow up, but the roots grow down? We talked about tropism, that is phototropism and geotropism. Plants' growth is controlled by hormones, which include auxins, gibberellins, cytokinins, and florigen. The role of auxins in tropism. Having been made in the tips of the stems and roots, auxin is moved in solution by diffusion to all parts of the plant. In the stem, auxin causes the cells to elongate by absorbing more water due to increased elasticity. The effects are opposite in the roots where cells grow less. Auxins and phototropism. Auxin is produced at the apex of the stem. Under light shining on one side, auxin is distributed to the shaded side creating a gradient of the hormone across the stem. In the cells, auxin increases the elasticity of the cells, allowing them to absorb more water and therefore increasing tiger pressure. Consequently, the cells on the shaded side become elongated and cause the shoot to bend towards the light. We can prove this using several experiments. First, when the coleoptile is removed, there is no bending in response to light. This means that either the tip is the origin of the messenger or it must be stimulated by light. In another experiment, the coleoptile was covered to prevent light from reaching it. Again, no bending response occurred. 
This confirmed that the tip must be stimulated. When light was shone on the tip with the lower regions covered, bending occurred. This shows that only the tip need to be stimulated. In another experiment, a thin flake of the mineral mica was used to block chemical movement. When it was inserted in the illuminated side, bending occurred normally. But when it was inserted in the shaded region, there was no bending, showing that the chemical, that is auxin, travels down the shaded side. Again, because mica does not block electrical signals, this also suggested that the message was chemical. In yet another experiment, the tip segment was cut and placed off-center. Even in the dark, the coleoptile bends towards the side without the tip. This proves that the source of auxin is indeed the tip. Another scientist, Fritz Wendt, removed the coleoptile tip and incubated it on a block of agar. The agar was then placed on the coleoptile, off-center, in darkness. The hormone that the agar had absorbed traveled down the side of the chute, causing a response. The amount of bending is proportional to the amount of hormone in the agar. Winslow Briggs inserted a very thin plate vertically through the tip. The glass does not prevent light transmission, but there was no bending. Auxin cannot travel through glass and its concentration remained equal on either side. When the glass plate was inserted below the tip, auxin moved across to establish a hormone gradient and bending occurred. When the tip was examined, 70% of auxin was found on the shaded side. Auxin and Geotropism Auxins have the opposite effect on root cells. In roots, auxins cause less growth. The shaded side of the root will contain more auxin and so will grow less. This enables the lead side of the root to grow more and bend away from light. Moreover, we have the opposite happening to gravity too. In a horizontal root, the bottom side contains more auxin and grows less, so the root bends downwards in the direction of gravity, so positive geotropism. But of course the stem responds differently. In a horizontal stem, again the bottom side contains more auxin because it is not directly hit by sunlight. And because auxin causes growth in stems, the bottom side grows more causing the stem to bend upwards against the direction of gravity, so negative geotropism.